Welcome back to Fastball, where I'll tell you about a cheap and short game, and if it's worth your money and your time, in under 10 minutes. Let's begin. And boys, it is gonna be a quick one. Today we're gonna take a look at Max Payne 3, and let's get something straight right off the bat. I have never played the first one, and I've only played about 20 minutes of the second. So trust me when I say, you really don't have to play those to enjoy this one. How good the previous two games are is a different topic for a different video. Released in 2012 for the three main platforms, and even getting a Mac release a year later, Max Payne 3 is a third person cover shooter with the famous bullet time mechanic. Toggleable slow motion, complete with diving through the air, firing two guns at once, toward any criminal dumb enough to get an ex-cop Max's face. The inspiration taken from classic John Woo films is thinly veiled at best, but you won't care at all, my friends, because the shooting is fucking awesome. The game sees an old, cynical, retired cop Max move to Brazil to take on a protection job for a wealthy family after he's forced to leave the United States, thanks to a series of events spelled out in some flashback missions. And the flashbacks are low-key the best part of the game, but maybe I'm just partial to the New Jersey aesthetic. The story is pretty good, serviceable at best at parts, but pretty good at others. A common criticism of Max Payne 3 is the lengthiness and frequency of the cutscenes, but as a Metal Gear fan, that didn't seem to bother me. The heavy stylization and constant voiceover for Max are other gripes a few people seem to have, but the consistent quality of the voiceover work and the dedication to said stylization makes it all more than fine by me. The rest of the sound, voice acting, sound effects, and visuals are, unsurprisingly, very well done, considering the usual Rockstar level of polish. It seems to run on some iteration of the engine used for Grand Theft Auto V, but purposed for the long linear levels with small, highly detailed environments. But fuck all that shit, because this game is fun as hell. The gunfights are straight from 90s Hong Kong cinema fantasy, complete with overwhelming odds, akimbo fire, slow motion, smoking cigarettes, and diving through the air to dodge incoming fire. It just feels like every fight is just so tense and well executed. Headshots are instant death for Max, as well as your foes, which keeps the sweat fresh on your brow. It's a game where getting better at it is wicked tangible. First playthrough, I had tons of trouble with select few firefights. Probably had like 30 deaths or so. Second playthrough on hard mode, I think I died twice total. Switching gears, I really love the attention to detail in Max Payne 3. Not just the nicely furnished, usually destructible environments, but the little gameplay stuff, like how Max will hold a two-handed weapon offhand when you have a pistol selected, or tuck it underneath his arm to reload. Or how if you dive shoulder first into obstacles, Max will cringe in slow motion, bracing for the impact. A favorite addition of mine is the simple ability to stay laying on the ground after a dive, and spin around 360 taking out baddies from a prone position, not forcing you to stand back up too soon and risk spoiling your badass moment. To recap, incredible and unique gameplay inspired by some of my favorite movies, the usual rockstar level of polish for all the sound and visuals, creative stylization for presentation in both cutscenes and narration, and a story that gets the job done. I'm serious, that's it. Go play this, I have nothing else to say. I got it for 10 bucks and one playthrough is just about under 10 hours. And with two extra challenge modes plus multiple difficulties, I find it absolutely warrants multiple playthroughs. During big sales, like the Steam Summer sale going on right now, it goes as low as $6.99. So you do the math on the dollar per fun hour ratio. I told you boys, it was gonna be a quick one.